Hey everybody, this is Adam Kokesh, the Freedom Guy, and I think this is just such an important topic right now. And we have come to a, a certain point in the national conversation, in the history of America, where we're more polarized than ever, at least by some superficial metrics, and we see that there has been a real degradation of the American political conversation. It's a lot of fighting, a lot of bickering, and a lot of struggle over who gets to control the levers of power over other Americans, which seems kind of anti-American, doesn't it? And there are a lot of people now asking, how do we unite America? How do we bring people together? How do we get past all this fighting and division? And the answer is really, really simple. And this comes from a simple kind of logical, rational analysis of the situation, right? Because we see contradictions in in uh, the, the proposed solutions. Well, we're going to do this. We're going to impose this policy and that policy. And when you go, well, gee, if we if if we adopt this national directive through the federal government, somebody's not going to like it. So it's really like, how do we figure out how to make who unhappy? How to make the least people happy? and uh, at least people unhappy, how to make the most people happy. And so we, we don't really uh, actually stop and examine, or at least it seems like we haven't stopped and examined the false premise behind this apparent contradiction, right? Because there are no contradictions. If you find one, simply check your premises and you will find that one of them is false. And in this case, it's really obvious. It's like it's staring us right in the face and it's just, oh, it's maddening. That, that more people don't acknowledge this. Although I would suggest it's because a lot of the people who are in this space who are talking about these issues are somehow benefiting from most Americans believing in this false premise. Uh, a lot of them are beneficiaries of government itself. A lot of them know that if government didn't exist the way that it does today, that they kind of be out of a job because they're the argumentative class. Their point is to argue with people. They get paid to argue, to, to, to create conflict and division and, and feed off of that. They don't make money by actually bringing people together. They don't make money by solving problems, finding solutions. It's kind of like the modern pharmaceutical industry. You know, they They'd rather have patients than cures, so they want to keep people sick and keep handing out prescription medications that keep you uh, keep you sick. That basically just sort of treat symptoms and make you more dependent on them for money. So similarly, in the political class, I would say that's why this one false premise hasn't been exposed, and it's this: Americans need to all live under one single government in order to be united as Americans. Not true, not even close. If anything, forcing all Americans to live under a single government is what creates the conflict. Now, I like to use an analogy here, and I first thought of this as like, well, imagine you have two kids driving around in a car with their parents, and one of them wants ice cream and the other one wants candy, but you'll see why that didn't really hold up in this analogy the way that I wanted it to. So let me, let me just modify this a little bit for the sake of making this point. You got two kids in a car and they're really health oriented kids. They really know what's good for them. They know what they want. And one of them says, mom, I want Brussels sprouts. I really want Brussels sprouts for dinner tonight. And the other kid says, hey, I'm, I really need some fruit. I haven't had my, you know, daily allowance of fruit today. I really need some fruit. That would be really good for me. I'm just craving fruit. Can we go somewhere that I can get some fruit? And the mom says, you know what? Since we can't satisfy both of you, we couldn't possibly drive to two different places. We couldn't possibly go somewhere where you can get Brussels sprouts and you can get apples. Like, we just, no, no, we can't do that. That's impossible. We all have to eat the same thing. So we're all going to go to the uh, to the ice cream and candy shop. And you're all going to get ice cream and candy. And it's going to... It's going to taste good, I guess, but it's it's going to be really bad for you. And and that's kind of what we're dealing with with the American federal government, right? It's it, you know, it throws out these goodies, financial goodies, you know, to make you dependent on it. It throws out this propaganda to make you think that it it's necessary and good and and legitimate and and essential for human happiness. And really it's 
It's the opposite that's true. Being forced into one system, being forced into a one-size-fits-all kind of government is what makes us fight. So it's like you've got these two kids at the ice cream and candy store, and I know this stretching reality a little bit here, but they're both unhappy because they're going like, this isn't good for me. I don't want this. And one of them's going, come this way and trying to pull them to the, uh, to the Brussels sprout store. And this other kid's going, no, take us over here to where the apples are. And they get nowhere. They're fighting. They're divided. And now there's this huge division and they're still stuck in the candy store. So similarly with America today, we are stuck in this false premise that we have to be united under one government to be united as Americans. But if instead we really embrace what Americanism is, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men and women, they got that one wrong, are created equal, that we have inalienable rights, and that this is what we strive for to achieve in reality as Americans, and that we will overthrow empires if that's what it takes to achieve those ideals. So for America today, it's really simple. We have to stop trying to force everybody into this one system, this one size fits all that makes everybody miserable and makes us fight. Let us be united in the cause of freedom. Let us be united in Americanism. Let us bring Democrats and Republicans and liberals and conservatives and moderates and statists and, and, and anarchists and communists and socialists and nudists, everyone together by saying, I want you to get what you want. I want you to have what you want. How about that? You get what you want. Everybody can be happy. Everybody can be united in this. So this is really an important concept to understand. And it's one that's just been buried from the, the whole conversation, you know, and it's not something that, that even I've talked about before, because it's not something that I've really had the, um, the answer for, but we do now. And this is what we're doing with our presidential campaign, Kokesh for Not President. It's about dissolving the entire federal government in a peaceful, orderly, responsible manner, leaving 50 independent states plus the territories and the district to be sovereign, to allow their right of self-determination to be respected. And of course, this is only the first step. And it's, you know, it's a good first step. And remember, eliminating the federal government we're only talking about a relatively small portion of the overall American government workforce to begin with. It's about 3 million people out of about 22 million people who work for government altogether at the state and local levels. Um, we're just talking about cutting the fat off the top. I mean, it is the most evil, most destructive, most wasteful layer of government that we have in America, obviously. So getting rid of that would be a good first step to bringing Americans together under the banner of freedom. Isn't that what America's supposed to be all about? Anyways, if you want to check it out, please go to thefreedomline.com, thefreedomline.com, or kokeshfornotpresident.com. Sign up, get involved. And if you think this is an important idea, I think it's an important idea. I'm doing everything I can to get this out. We're on a 68-city national tour right now, warming up for the 2018 Libertarian Party National Convention, getting ready for 2020. So I hope you'll help us. I hope you'll join us on the road. If you if you haven't uh, had us come through your area already, you can go to thefreedomline.com slash calendar to check that out. And if we have come through your area, there's still plenty that you can do to get involved and help with this cause of freedom and uniting Americans around the new Americanism. So please check it out. And again, if, if you think this, is, this idea is important, because the mainstream media is not going to talk about this until it's too late, please, please, please share this video, spread the message, and thank you for all of your support and making freedom possible.